And we're live! Mr. Griff, 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 like I was blacked out working the whole time, so maybe you guys could do a better job, but uh, I, I know it was awesome. Dude, I've never been to a full on burner conference. I'm sorry, burner conference. I've been to some of those. I know full on like uh, crypto community and gathering. It's not a conference, I was told many times. But Speaking of burners, I was exactly. very impressed by the burner wall. Dude, it's so like serious work. work. So they so they're so we're in the sports castle, which used to be a car dealership. Um, my mom was so, I, so I'm I'm from Boulder, so it worked out really well. I just sort of drive down. Um, it used to be a car dealership, so there's multiple levels, and I don't know if we can like yeah, we can like show. Uh, maybe you can see like up there. There's yeah. Anyways, there's multiple there's levels. Ramps. So you can see yeah. down onto the lower and yeah. the upper levels, so you can see what's going on, but everything's still really segmented by. Uh, space so like there's quiet hacker spaces. There's stage shows. Well, just chill like the, the sponsor. You know, there's the a chill zone and a chill zone. There's yeah. a chill zone. Yeah. I miss yeah. all yeah. the sponsor tables. Oh, That's where course. everybody and shows. This, this is chill, chill and chill zone. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is chill. This is the middle zone. The middle yeah. zone. Yeah. Yeah. Did you guys get to the relaxation zone? I have never. I I haven't been able to I, relax until right now. Yeah. Relaxation. So, oh, nice. so that was <laughs> your like fell asleep. For the yeah, yeah. Because so so like I came. This is actually the first hackathon I've ever like participated in. Like tried to hack. Um, I say tried because my group we made we made about 30 percent of three different projects. <laughs> they all kind of centered around the same thing. But like at the end of the time, we're like, all right, there's there's no dignity in a PowerPoint. Oh. If, we if, we have, if we don't have something that like it was running code, well, it's not it's not. That's funny. Um, but I worked until like 6 a.m. and it was just like, all right, too late to drive home. Uh, but there were a bunch of bean bags and like pretty bumping techno at 6 a.m. still. So I went to sleep to techno and woke nice. up to a nice beat too. Yeah. I would say this is the hands down the best Ethereum event I've been to. Brad. Period. I mean, this, the the fact that that's you are using you've been to a lot of Ethereum. Yeah, right? yeah, that's that's not, yeah. I don't say that lightly. I, I, I thought about it. I actually have been like almost saying this a couple of times. But the the rock flat at the end really. Like, <laughs> <laughs> the final. Yeah. But I mean, the fact is, we were using, you know, actual crypto for the entire event. That's never happened. We've never done that. I live off crypto. I've lived off crypto for years. I, I actually bought crypto. I, I bought USD for crypto at this event from two people because I was running low. I try to live off crypto. I've never. This is this is paradise. This is amazing. Word. And it's all because you're amazing, wallet, yeah. dude. Like the yeah, UX and that thing. Word. The, the cool part is so so. I guess if you, if you don't know the 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 way it works is uh, all of the food trucks outside. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't finish talking about the sports castles. So we got the levels, but then outside there's a the street, there's Broadway, and there are food food trucks out, out front. Um, and then each food truck had a QR code. Um, and then everybody who was a hacker or a volunteer or just attended got a little token. Uh, That's what we're going for. So the little token had yeah, this QR code. Still here. There are thirty. There's thirty buff coin. I forgot it at home. So I, I didn't use it for one day. But the um, so you scan this. It gives you a burner wallet with with your your budget for food, and then you can use that to buy whatever you want from the food trucks. Worked really well. Win. On wait, there's a wait, come 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 explain how we can still win. We're doing a we're doing uh, a live. Uh, all right, all right. It's not you gotta be Yeah, yeah. <laughs> If Virgil Griffith was here, I'd be like, I can't go in, man. It makes sense. Hey, guys. Matt Locker, this is nifty. Oh, I'm sorry. He's not going to swear. So here's the wallet that comes up after you scan. It basically has your balances, 
and then you can kind of just hit the little scan button and you scan in and you uh, buy food at the food truck with crypto and it takes about five seconds and bam, they hand you your food. Yeah, you had vendors playing it, people were passing, sending uh, Buffy die to each other. Uh, there was a uh, MakerDAO was uh, giving out socks if you donated one one dollar oh, to uh, UNICEF. I was like, dude, UNICEF, are you kidding me? Like, what is wrong with you? Uh, and so I actually got them to take split it in half, half UNICEF. Which, I'm not gonna say it. Never mind. I'm not gonna. I'm gonna go that route. Uh, but the other half is going to a real charity called uh, Grace Aid, which is 100% volunteer based, and they run on Give It, completely traceable donations. Yeah. Uh, I mean, like that's what I'm talking about. You could donate Buffy Die. You could go buy food. You could send it to each other. Who are using it for all over the place? We the number of transactions just exploded. I mean, yeah. if you think about like 2,000 people who may or may not have used crypto before in 15 seconds are onboarded into crypto. Did you, did you run into any like glitches? Oh, trouble? Gosh, like, sure. Yeah. 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 Ruby. we had so so we did all these speakeasies like weeks and weeks ahead of time where we just like went through that same ux flow over and over and over again to make sure that like people were gonna like not have problems so if you did hand your coin over the the truck would basically just scan your private key it would detect that a vendor has scanned a private key and the the the, the wallet would basically just pull up like a withdraw thing where they could like just kind of put up, put in their menu and, and charge them for what they wanted to, and then burn their key. But that's just bad practice, right? Yeah. Having somebody yeah. private key. Yeah. But but still, it worked, and you had people that would just they had the coin, and they would go to the vendor, and they'd be like, "How how do I use this?" And then the vendor would be like, "I know how to use that." They take it. The they vendors, the vendors, were and they were helping people. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That that was was like oh, non-crypto non -crypto vendors after about five transactions knew more about most of the crypto people that were yeah. going up and could like talk them through how to set it up. It was yeah, so cool. Cool. I, and I was talking to Igor. He said that there was only eight thousand uh, dollars on the on the X dice on the X dice chain, but there was seventy five thousand dollars worth of actual transactions right. that happened on X dice. I mean, that means every dollar was spent like almost ten times. I don't even know how it's possible. Well, so yeah, it's different. Like there's a there there was a specific off ramp that we built that was sort of uh, not as trustless as we wanted it to be, but it was part of how Eat Denver wanted it to work. <clears throat> Basically, they wanted a uh, human oracle right in the middle of the money. So it's kind of like goes against the crypto ethos a little bit, but basically we do everything else to buy, like by the book. There's just that part that's like, no. when you're a conference organizer yeah. and you have, I think it was like, we want to put that in like a side chain that we just came up with months ago, right? Yeah. And by we, I mean POA came up yeah. with the x -Dye. Like all of this wouldn't be possible without POA's x -Dye chain. Yeah, for sure. I'm, I love that. I'm actually a validator on chain. Yeah, I love x -Dye. Right. I, I think it, you know, that, but that's the thing. It is kind of a compromise, right? Because mm -hmm. it's like, it's effectively a, a blockchain multisig. Yep, you know, it's like exactly. there's, like, there's, four, there's four validators. It's open. We will vote more people in, please, if someone wants to be a validator. That's so nice. It's so easy to run it. I'm so excited to build stuff. But it's it's like analogous to cash though. So it's it's like people will kind of like riff on the <laughs> decentralization a little bit because there are these validators. But like anybody who comes up to me and gives me any grief about the X die stuff, I immediately say, hey, What do you think about keeping private keys in local storage? And everyone here knows that's a bad idea. But it's the time, it's the time for UX to kind of make these trade-offs where we get, we catch people at the top of the funnel and we put private keys in mobile storage for $5. It's just like, it's, it's analogous to catch it in your pocket where it's okay to like roll out to the bar with like $15, $20 in your pocket. Sure, you might pull out your keys and accidentally drop it and it would be sad, but it's not the end of the world, right? Yeah. You don't go to the bar with like $10,000. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, I do. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I actually, I, I because I was buying crypto from people here, I, I had to put a thousand dollars in in your burner wallet, Woo -wee. and it got stuck. Woo -wee. <laughs> well, it got stuck because I didn't know how to use it. I didn't know how to send okay. the die out. Oh, okay. I had to actually then. But you showed me there was yeah, like yeah. it was in the back. The transfer. I, I didn't think you could send die. I thought why well, it's like no, you are only sending Buffy die to these vendors, right? right? Like you don't want to send X die. Right. I want to try to send die to this random address, and everyone's confused. Right. Right. So it makes sense. 
But uh, yeah. so so if you're gonna put a thousand dollars in there in in the burner, at least have a, a brain wallet. So you can go to the advanced section and there's a seed phrase section. Type in a nice long seed phrase that you and only you can remember, and then you can put a thousand dollars in there. Probably that's probably okay, right? Probably. Yeah, brain wallets are a little scary for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. But like that private key that's in there is just a random private key. Yeah. Right? Well, I still if, like, have your thing. In, oh, okay. And it's also in my trust. Oh, okay. It's now it's also in my trust wallet. Got it. Got it. I think this is this is larger. Like, so on one hand, you have the fully trusted system, which is what we're all kind of used to, right? You have money, banks, everything. On the other hand, you, if you want to, if you want that option, you can go the Griff, one of the Griff's paths, and live <laughs> entirely in crypto. I'm actually also but not for daily transactions or anything, but like I try to shift stuff over to crypto whenever possible. Um, but the middle of the bell curve are people that want to edge away from that trust that is in current financial systems and in current platforms and things with yeah broader implications of the internet. Um, but maybe they don't want to go all the way to they have you know a laser engraved piece of iron that they bury in their backyard. <laughs> in their dog right, you need yeah. partial trust and you need most importantly for uh, a lot a lot of the sponsors I was surprised were all about uh, seamless and a couple of the hackathon winners were about not having your first ether being able to initiate your first ethereum transaction without having ether and without creating an address or creating a wallet like just a phone number or an email address mm -hmm. you create an account and it's these semi-trusted methods that are going to bridge the gap exactly. um, and if you have that then you can move between fully trusted and not trusted at all. Yeah. Um, that's, that's my, my, my thesis has always been like it's, it's so much easier to sell a seed phrase or educate someone about a seed phrase after it's protecting value, right? Yeah. So like in the burner, sure, you start using it and it's mine and you can transfer stuff and transfer stuff, but if you get home at night, maybe something should slide down and be like, hey, do you want to learn a little bit more about how about try this wallet? Like check out mm -hmm. Trust, check out Balance, check out all these other wallets and we'll teach you about a seed phrase, right? Like a nice, nice education flow once they're incentivized to do so. I think that's what's going to help us drive onboarding. Yeah, and honestly, we, you shouldn't ever go full on decentralized. Like that's, <laughs> let me just tell you from experience, it's a bad it's idea. Yeah, you don't want to do that. You start off centralized with like like having somebody in the middle there, that's just protecting the vendors yes, from like, training a bug. Wheels. Yeah, you yeah. got to start with the training wheels and then you take them off. You know, you, you start centralized with a path to decentralization mm -hmm. and then you're, you're solid. But you, of course you have to have that path. A lot of people don't do that because there's this like, oh, but regulations or I could get in trouble. It's actually the easy way out and it's not responsible. It's like telling somebody to go drive alongside this crazy road on a cliff and not putting up a guardrail. You know, like put up a guardrail. <laughs> put up a guardrail. Yeah, okay. It's their fault if they fall off the cliff. It is 100%. But, but don't be a Some people are still going to fall off the cliff yeah. and let's try to avoid that. You, you yeah. can minimize that, you right. know? Right. Uh, yeah, so guardrails are great. Centralization is okay as long as it's not the end goal. It's it's just on the on the road. And and as you were saying, like UX was a huge part of this conference. Oh, yes. Did you just oh, bring yeah. UX to Denver or what? <laughs> like, is this something that you you brought here, like, or is it just to them in general? Or have you seen such a UX focus uh, event? It's been awesome. Yeah, so many of the so many of the, the talks were basically about like how we make it smooth and how we make it usable. Three or four of them. I think there were like eight or eight or nine projects I saw throughout the space that were like just extending the burner. Like, let's add tips. Let's yeah. let's make this thing uh, kind of like ports. Like that, yeah. which is like oh, these things are like on my list. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Actually, yeah. that guy was walking no, by. I think that yeah, was the guy that, that, that was the you one guys did C plus yeah. Z guy. Yeah. Yeah. So I went to Z guy and it totally like shows the transactions on chain. But I think that oh, like so that you don't know. No, no. So it's it's only you the. The switch to ZDI is still you can see oh you turn you know a thousand die into right. ZDI, but then when ZDI is transferred, you can't tell who's sent who you're sending to or anything. Right. And then you can tell oh well you just took out nine hundred and from ZDI. Yeah. Zdai. So if you don't know, ZDI is kind of if you've heard of Zcash is a cryptocurrency that relies on what are called zero knowledge proofs, which is just proving that an event has taken place or proving something. Uh, proving that you like have the knowledge, but proving that you know show. something without revealing yes. anything about yeah. what you know. Um, my best example of a of a like easy to grasp zero knowledge proof is if you assume that I have a full deck of cards 
and I want to prove to you that this card I'm holding is a red card, all I have to do is show you uh, what are these? 26. 26 black cards. And then you know, even though I didn't reveal to you what card I have, I've proved to you that I'm a red card. If you, if, if you take the assumption that I have a, a legit deck, which is one of the requirements of Zero Monsters. Anyways, it was that on a POA sidechain using DICE, so you can do a not fully anonymous transactions between, uh, yeah, with fast turnover. Oh, and but are you saying you could actually see them? Yeah, so I think, I, so if you go to zdi.io right now, they basically have a burner wallet, but it's just it's just like a replica of the burner wallet. I don't think it's like fully ZK'd yet. Yeah. So I, like, be careful, like, as you go to the website, like, don't be expecting the ZKs to be there. It's got, like, every it's hackathon hack. project. It's a hack. Every yeah. hackathon right. project is, like, a weekend of awesomeness. But, yeah. but, but like, when you when you think of the technical debt, it's basically, like, you, you like, try to, it's, like, one of those jugglers that has, like, the the, the plate <laughs> spinning, and they're, yeah. like, there's fire. And yeah. you, you do one good picture for the hackathon, and, and then, then everything falls, falls down. <laughs> right. There's a reason you don't get your new iPhone described, oh, it's so hacky. Like, yeah. Hacky, yeah. hacky. Yeah. hacky yeah. Yeah. For a yeah, right, right. For sure. But so I don't know. In a month, those yeah, will be good. Yeah, yeah. exactly. I, I, uh, they use Circum, which is really cool. Uh, it's like uh, actually something that I did three made. It's one of my projects that I work on with Jordy. So, uh, chill out. Yeah, chilling. <laughs> Sorry. I've been talking about the entire time. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, I had a chill. I had a chill. No, dude, chill. I've seen Circum get used a lot. So Word. it's really cool. If you want to learn ZK Snarks or, or play with it, you can deploy a trusted setup like that. Like, Word. really, you can, like, in a hackathon. It probably took them an hour to make that part, you know. So, what it's other really projects? What, what were your favorites? Anybody? I mean, any favorites. More shills. Um, uh, okay. Definitely packful. Okay. Packful. They. Uh, the, TCRs. Yeah. yeah. Well, token bonding curve going into a TCR that is like supporting a common good. So the idea is realigning incentives around the commons. So like the way I describe it is like think of main coin, right? You, you guys know main Back coin. Back in the day, yeah. Yeah. Name coin still lives today, and okay. no one uses it. It's amazing. Why is it alive? How does it survive? Is it like DNS or what is yeah. name coin? Yeah, yeah it's, it's like kind of like DNS. Yeah, it's like yeah. Okay. it's like colored coins off of Bitcoin, No, right? it's not colored coins. It's the yeah. first fork of Bitcoin, but okay. it's uh, it's a it's its own chain, and uh, the miners are mining. They use the same algorithm. It's actually merged mine with Bitcoin, but they uh, register they register domain addresses dot bit domains, mm -hmm. but no one uses that. Like no one uses it. Like if this was a startup, or if this was a, a nonprofit or something, trying to like, oh, like, we want oh, to yeah, just go to my dot. Yeah. yeah, dude, like, no what? one does it. <laughs> right. No one. But Namecoin lives today, right? Wow. You can do, you can register a domain address. Why is that, right? Like because they built an economy. They didn't build a startup. They didn't build a business. They didn't. All those would have failed. They built a robust economy where every actor is acting in their self-interest, right? And in the charity space today. People aren't acting in their self-interest, they act altruistically. But that's not sustainable. That's that's like suffering from the tragedy of the commons where someone, you know, donates something and they suffer and everyone else benefits. Right? That is a very poorly designed system. <laughs> you know? Uh, and what this system does is when you donate, you get a token, right? And that token it, it, you might lose money, right? It's a it's a token bonding curve. So uh, it's not a Ponzi scheme. A lot of token bonding curves are Ponzi schemes. But Ponzi schemes go like this forever. It depends on the curve. Right? Yeah, exactly. If the curve goes out like this, then it's not a Ponzi scheme because there's a point where the next person who buys is guaranteed this one right? because uh, they, they have too much. So it's kind of like a way to create a continuously funded organization uh, where you always have a certain amount of money uh, unless the organization actually fails completely. Or usually by failing, it actually succeeds. Like if, let's say, that there's a homeless problem out here in Denver, it's horrible. I feel so bad for these guys, right? If you wanted to create an economy around helping the homeless, launch a token bonding curve and the TCR, people would put money in and instead of donating, they would actually get a token. And instead of just burning all their money, they might get a token and, and they might lose some value, but they're helping. You know, it's I'm better than burning money in yeah. a second. Keep going. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and so then they, uh, but they also might make money, right? So you have this opportunity to be like social impact investing. And then uh, the money stays in this token mining curve, but then you have this other piece called like kind of a DAO that uh, the people with tokens can vote one way or another. Let's just black box the governments for now. Uh, they vote on, well, give it campaigns to support, to help homeless people, right? So like someone might want to help bring blankets everybody. And so, uh, or, or build a homeless shelter. And 
when uh, you buy in, you get to vote on these things. And what's really cool is if it all goes to hell, it doesn't work. Because it's on Gibbet and it's open and anyone can donate to any of these things, they can still just donate to the charity. Like, you don't, the people don't hurt if our governance doesn't work, right? It's like safe enough to try. And even for the person who's donating, usually the homeless, it's like, even if they lose money, they don't have any. Yeah. You know? It's, it's, so, the buff coin, right? Like you could donate, you could use the maker thing to to donate to UNICEF or the, the other charity. Grace, Grace, Grace Age. But the, the other nice thing is you add other people in the mix. The donors might like that would usually donate. They become speculators, but then you have also random speculators. You might not even care about homeless people. Let's start like playing this game. It is kind of weird though. Market. I could be a secondary market maker. Like, what do you make money off? <laughs> Donations to homeless people. Yeah. I just I ride the Dude, <laughs> I can't show markets. It's like, gonna be hot shit. shit. I think it's the next. I think it's the next big one. It yeah. reminds me of the CLR stuff they do, where it's it's like matching money to so the I think like yeah. the talent and the Ethereum Foundation said we'll put in a chunk of money and then we'll let everybody else donate and then the amount that they donate ends up getting matched, but it gets matched like in a quadratic. Right, where like, and it's like, I don't remember, it's like a square or no, whatever. Really yeah, yeah, yeah. But basically, like, your signals, if, if you have civil resistance and you can say, like, these identities all voted with their money, even though I put in only put in $20, they may end up getting more like $200 from my donation, right? And that's a good way to do that, where you kind of like let the community signal with their money and then you match it with money you were already going to give away. But it's like that helps you figure out who is the right person. Yeah, I love these experiments. Yeah, right? like let's experiment by making the world a better place. You know, instead of just making the message. Yeah, uh, Daniel from Colony for in the Chill Zone is uh, going to be presenting on Budget Box at HCC. Um, I'm gonna go to HCC. Are you guys going? Yeah, I'm like on the speaker list. I got to convince oh, my wife. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 Just we'll see. Flowers. And uh, sorry, this guy flowers aren't gonna work. It's gonna have to be better than that. <laughs> Tokenized flowers. Take your Take your yeah. burner. Ooh, that, would be, that would be awesome. Come on. Yeah, I don't think she's a burner. Oh, no. <laughs> okay, so speaking of burner, non burner projects that were awesome. Uh, Billy Brain Camp, is that how you pronounce his yeah, name? Yeah. Uh, they created this uh, Chrome extension that you installed. Oh, that yeah. basically that was cool. Watches all your Web3, and it's like, it's like, Dev tools, but for Web three developers. That was really ready. Yeah, yeah. Oh man, it's yeah, so that was dope, definitely dope. Dope. Like you, you open it up and you can like just dig through the guts of what's going on. You can see all your transactions. You can see all your events. You can see all this cool just stuff. Pull the byte code. You yeah. can code contracts with just it. Just all the stuff that we do, like very clunky. I mean, like like some of us, some of us have our ways, right? But like it's taken you a long time to sharpen those ways. Mm -hmm. Where for someone to just dive in and start figuring it out, this is super. Super Billy, awesome. I, you know, I've never met Billy. I, and I saw, so I, I, yeah, he was well, so deadpan. The judge, he was like, the, the judge who asked, like, oh, yeah, how much of this was, was real, and he was like, it was all, was like, it was all live. Do all of this today? And he's like, one hundred percent, one hundred percent live. <laughs> and he's like, this should have existed from the beginning. Like, we should yeah, right. have this. Right. It's right. so funny because I saw Clover, which is his uh, actually token bonding curve project, yeah. which is what he was using for the dev tools. I didn't put it together. That was him. I didn't. I've wanted to meet that guy forever. I, I was I was hacking on his uh, refundable tokens, which is the NFT uh, that issues an ERC twenty. Right. It's a, a the ERC twenty the modified ERC twenty contract owns an NFT. So it's both compatible with with, with ERC twenty and in fact it's compatible with ERC seven twenty one. Um, yeah, the one thing that emerged, which that was a sterling example of, I think that's starting to emerge more is developer experience stuff. Like, no longer do you have to write your own stuff from scratch, write your own tools. People are working exclusively on tools. Uh, pretty proud of my friends. They did a, they used ETHQL um, and some of the stuff that goes into Colony JS and, and Taylor to build an arbitrary uh, JavaScript library generator. So you give it a contract, um, and it's a command line tool that will read all your contracts and build you a library, but then you have all of your contract methods in uh, NPM. So you can just like do an init thing, it'll scan your contracts, and it'll give you those methods that you could use to write, write your DAFs or something. Very cool. So, like, it, the, the middle of the stack is sort of filling in. It's yeah, like these little. So, like, UX, developer X. Yeah, is that D a thing? DX. DX, yeah. DX, DX. UX, DX. It sounds like DeFi and all the other stuff. DeFi. UX, DX. And then I think, like, the impact. 
But yeah. social impact was probably like the three, and you know, intertwined, of course, yeah. in the winners of, of the event. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. And one thing that I thought would have been nice is some of the bounties were for projects that like were not really ready to be used and have poor documentation. And like there was enough education, really cool projects that were like impact and was, like exciting. But then they tried to do this bounty and they spent like 10 hours on the bounty because it wasn't ready yet and there wasn't any warning for them. Yeah. It would have been nice if there was like some kind of communication on like Portis, anyone who integrated Portis it basically works. But anyone who actually tried to integrate, uh, I'm not going to name names. But Portis like, did work. I saw yeah, Portis, Portis running live in a couple of weeks. Yeah. yeah, it worked great. Lots of people had no problem doing it. Like major props to Portis. And if you tried and to they brought it, socks. Um, did you see their socks? No. Yeah, oh, man, great shell socks. Portis socks. <sighs> and they, they did, so they, they had their own bounty. Sorry, I think I interrupted you. Yeah, well, that's okay. They yeah. had their own bounty where you had to do, to get the socks, you had to like go to Radicards and like collect uh, an NFT and then sell the NFT and then it all the, came together. The swag game was yeah. just going yeah. up yeah. and up and up. There were socks. Yeah. I saw a really great uh, truffle scarf. Ooh. Truffle, well done truffle. Ooh. I think one of the <laughs> swag <laughs> games that was place in it. Like very, very well done. So we have the t-shirts. That was the, like the one thing that came out of DevCon. So we're like, how am I going to pack like pants. 18 t-shirts? Yeah. We need I, <laughs> I think I saw how much fantasy I say that. Pants, skirts, like leggings, uh, anything for the lower body, like, yeah, kilts. Ooh. Kilts? Yeah. yeah. Kilts. Dude, the shell kilt. The shell kilt. <laughs> it, it would be really interesting because people would basically be, it would be another form of signaling. You would go to a conference with one pair of clothes and then you would wear the things you sort of represented throughout <laughs> the event, right? Ooh. Like, like thirty percent of the people would be wearing like a MetaMask shirt. Yeah. Well, like, yeah, that's cool. You'd have a different version of the Rubik's Cube party. Oh, no. Cube party. So the Rubik's Cube party is you're supposed to wear all of each of your items. Clothing needs to be different color, oh. and then over the course of the party, you find people with oh, try to, like, and you try to leave the party all in one color. Oh, that's wow. awesome! That, that is funny. Funny. That's, a, that's, that's a good idea. idea. Yeah. yeah, I've never even heard of that. <laughs> it's Got to wear underwear to the Rubik's Cube. Yeah. Oh, come on. Have some <laughs> colored underwear. Life. Yeah. You got to trade <laughs> underwear with somebody. Else. Yeah. Awesome. My underwear is green. Just kidding. I don't like <laughs> Come on. Come on. Uh, I, I, I would never guess. <laughs> <laughs> so what was your guys' favorite part of this time? Oh, I'll tell you. My favorite part was Joe Lubin was speaking about the kind of the state of the theory, right? Yeah. And he's going through all, like, Here's where we are. Here's where we need to go. Here's this. Here's what this project is doing. He like gets to the middle of it. Like takes a breath. He says something that, like, and then there's Austin Griffin, who who can, <laughs> who can buy and chug a beer with cryptocurrency in 52 seconds. <laughs> like that's like my boss's boss. Like giving me bread for chugging beer. That's it was that was cool. It was a it was a like like a single tear moment. Uh, <laughs> what about you? Oh man, I don't know. I I mean, I think I think as much as I hate to say, like when I realized that a project wasn't about to go over the finish line, I had a moment. I stepped back. I just was like really low on morale, so I walked into the VIP room, which was empty, and took one of the beers that was in the like, like the big bag. Cans. Yeah, the growler. The the big, there was buffer corn buffer growlers. Corn growlers. Yeah, yeah. yeah, buffer corn. Buffer corn ale. Um, I was sipping on that and just like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm gonna keep working because I'm like really close to just figuring this one next thing out. Um, and I've learned more in the last two days than I have in the last three months. Like trying to kind of say this stuff. Like, oh, sure. and there were so many people that were here that were in the same boat as me. I've been talking to everybody. And they're like, yeah, like we worked on this. Like, whether you finish a project or not. Uh, the energy of of the hackathon of, of yes. this community was just so good and so supportive for for newcomers. They asked me for a quote, and I said that Eat Denver was like my whetstone, where like I had been working and kind of figuring it out, but like that really sharpens the blade when you come here with all these people and you see like this this is your family and your competition and your your friends all at the same time, and it, it, it like sets the bar. Like this is where you need to be. Like. You think you're pretty cool at home working on this stuff, but look what all these other guys are doing. You gotta like, if you want to create impact yourself, you've got to step it up. Yeah. What about you? What was your favorite? 
Uh, I got to I got to explain Toby Bombing Curves uh, to Andre Oh yeah, that was pretty awesome. Yeah. That was that was that was definitely my highlight. Although, if uh, to break it out of like a moment, just the vibe of this of this Word. scene was like another level. There was just like you were saying, like competition, dude. I didn't didn't feel like anyone was competing. This whole thing was a competition, and everyone was just like excited to learn and build, and it didn't feel competitive. You know, it felt kind of, and that's, that's, uh, yeah, I don't know, man, at Denver, it like, really just took it to another level. It felt awesome. like, I don't know, it felt like going to Burning Man. It's like, it felt like I came home. I came home to the Ethereum, like, like the Ethereum home. I was dancing to EDM up on the top floor last night, for sure. Yeah, someone on Pop's birthday. Yeah. That was nice. Yeah, so, someone, someone showed up with, like, a water jug, but it was half full of beer. <laughs> <laughs> like the, the, the yeah, giant gallon yeah, one. Yeah, and at the end there was actually a dude like drinking, <laughs> drinking out of it. I wonder if they just <laughs> emptied those buffet com- uh, corn crowd into it. Yeah, I'm just like this will work. It's worth it. <laughs> it's worth it. It's worth it. Russian cans on their <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, I don't know. You guys got anything? That's else? that's a pretty good riff, man. That's a good riff. Yeah, yeah. it was a good riff. Yeah. It started a little slow. I hope people make it past the first yeah. minutes. And if you made it here, we thank you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, another highlight though: the food downstairs is ridiculous good. right now. Yeah. Brock Flett, there's like people spinning on aerials. Aerial, yeah. on aerial oh, yeah. it's, it's just wild, man. We're we're about to do my last, like the last thing I'm stressed out about is we're doing a maker meetup. So uh, right over at Stoney's, they're doing, they're going to hand out the paper wallets that I've been doing with the speakeasies, but they're going to hand out 300 of them. And they don't have a token on them, they have X on them. So they're basically like handing out crypto at the door, and it's easy onboarding. Like, pull out your camera, look at the QR code, you have five bucks, you go to the bar, and the bar is selling beer for like two bucks, and it's on the, the burner POS system. So it's like the last speakeasy for me, so I can... Be done with all this and go home and lay on the couch with my son. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah man. You should do. I, I wanted to say about burning money. I think this is a really cool oh. mechanism. I think there is, and this is one of those things where crypto is the only space in which burning money makes sense. It's like a, a useful activity because you can prove that that is taken from the supply, and you can prove that that money was destroyed. The food I, trucks did that. They sent their tokens to all zero X and all Fs, so and that signaled to our oracle. We need to like make a, work. yeah, we need like a like a ceremony, the burning of the buff die. Mm-hmm. Where like we have like a little campfire mm-hmm. with a QR code, and everyone comes in, shares a little thing, burns their buff <laughs> die, and then it goes to a charitable. I mean, that's almost what Maker Down did. No, yeah, I yeah, said yeah, my last eight. Yeah. 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 Like, it's like yeah. if money is like a you know. Oh, the food trucks are super good, yeah. man. Yeah. Yeah. It was awesome good. Food. Like, a, like a, a euro with like french fries and sauce. That was good. And then there was also like sushi and, yeah. and like a light like uh, maki bowl. So like, because like if it's like three in the morning, some some people really go for the like the heavy stuff. But like for me, when I'm staying up late, I can't eat like heavy stuff. Right. Right. I, eat I don't know how this stuff. conference, I don't know how this conference happened. And like it was free. Like the sponsors, sponsors must have paid so sponsors. much money to make this. Yeah. Yes. Like it was. It, there's no way this was cheap. Like, and they're giving X die out the door. Like that's maker. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean, got some time. Okay. Good. I'm glad. Man. I'm glad. I just don't understand. That. I mean, and that's the cool thing. It was so inclusive. It wasn't just for rich people that already were in crypto a long time ago. And could right. Pay a thousand dollars for a conference. A bunch of people who. Dude, like I saw, I was talking to this guy, man. I don't know if he's homeless or not, right? Like, I mean, I'm homeless, so like, <laughs> I, I, I can kind of no. tell. <laughs> yeah, like, but uh, like he was, he was definitely, you know, and and he was hacking. I mean, no, there's, no. you know, there's no way he could have afforded to go to this conference. Right. And a couple of people on the team, the, the the team that I was like advising, the token bombing curve team, like, hackful. There, there's no way, that, yeah, there's no way they could have come. Okay. Okay. So they they were sponsored, right? Like people were sponsored to travel here too. Oh really? But yeah, I think there were there were like scholarships to give people. Oh yeah. wow. We actually we put the Gitcoin bounty this month to Eduardo, our intern, to get him up here from Edmonton. Oh nice. Yeah. And it was cool because he wrote like a lot of the little like as we were doing this six week little services that are just like these little crutches out on the edge to help like help with things and he wrote a lot of those. So yeah, awesome. you were working with him in that corner, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Cool. You, you had never met him in person. No. Nope. 
that's that's one of the cool things about what, what these conferences and what the space does is like you work with somebody for like months or yeah. years, like you know, you do a couple of griff riffs and then you <laughs> finally you didn't even recognize me. <laughs> You're just like, hey, we're this before I was like, yeah, come on. Nice. Okay. Oh, yeah. 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 My dumb card number is totally way up. I did not. Uh, I did the same thing. Right? Like, I did the same thing, right? I did the same thing. You look different on a video than in person, yeah, man. You're yeah. taller. Yeah. Way taller. So you guys are both taller, too. It's like, yeah, I can see it in like, your face. I was like, I'm Melvin's. Exactly. <laughs> like, yeah. 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 Let's, let's go. Yeah, thanks for the sponsors. Thanks for everybody. I forgot my home. Oh, yeah. Oh, wait. Oh, there we go. Oh, yeah. Up Show me your private key again, just in case. Steal his money. Steal his money. Did you guys get, steal it? Really Did you guys like get collectibles in your wallet? Uh, ERC721 collectibles, too. No, I didn't know this. Check this. Check this. Check this buff accord out. This buff accord uh, ERC. Oh, whoa. What am I doing there? Uh, oh, it's yeah. an ERC721, but it like spins when I pull it up, and you can send it right in the wallet natively. Yeah. Oh, nice. No, but how did you just get those? Like, you uh, I just set it up, yeah. Oh, look at that roll. Look at that. <laughs> no, but like, did people give them out for something? We, so we had uh, lofty goals of having uh, droppers. And, and we basically, Eduardo got it built and he had it on his computer. You basically like show it your public key and it like detects it. It's like this open CV thing where it puts a box around it and puts a text around it, like, I got it. And then like five seconds later, the badge is like, on your phone. But we were running around putting out fires, helping yeah. people learn what QR codes were and stuff. So it was like, we, oh. we could have done some Funny better. story about QR codes. I was trying to get my, I was trying to send my stepdad money, right? And this, I actually call him my dad, mom and dad. It's a qualified son. But, uh, so my, my mom, uh, she could not figure out. I was like, give me the receive address. There should be like some kind of QR code thing or whatever. She wouldn't tell me she didn't know what a QR code was. She's like, oh, there's this, and then there's a Rubik's Cube thing, and then there's the like, <laughs> airplane, and there's this thing. I was, I was like, man, no, there's got to be this QR code thing or this other thing. Rubik's Cube, apparently. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 Like, People don't know what that is. Like, that's a huge, uh, that's a going to be a huge, because that's yeah. Coinbase is doing. Yeah, that's yeah. Point, yeah. yeah. Uh, Alex Venison said, like, you are going to be disgusting. I, I just can't get it. I can't get it to anybody else without it, right? No, like, it's, if it's, I have to, like, talk someone through next like, dot I O, like, <laughs> D-A-I -D dot I O, yeah. like, that's, it's just a tough thing. When I can say, like, pull out your camera and have it look at this thing, and now you have it. Yeah. Yeah. Like, uh, near field NFC stuff, Dude. like, it's happening. Yeah. Yeah. transfer, right. Yeah, Thanks for that. yeah, that's what when we're talking about onboarding. Thanks for easy. another riff. Okay. Yeah, another riff. Sorry, yeah. 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 keep going, dude. We're riff forever. Yeah. Yeah. Let's, 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 let's keep going. Yeah. Let's, 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 let